So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some start off with by doing a molar mass problem. Okay, molar mass are the numbers that we get from the periodic table. So you should have this soft mound textbook experience chemistry, which has a picture of the a molecule, a, a crystal bismuth on the front. And we go to the very back, we have this complex periodic table, symbols and whatnot. The important thing for our purposes is in the upper right hand corner, there'll be a tiny little decimal and that decimal is said to be the molar mass. Now, some of you may have memorized these numbers again. I'm not trying to bore you. But the little decimal for hydrogen that's in that periodic table is 1.008. And the same decimal for carbon is 12.011. And for oxygen, it's 15.999. Now, when we say that these things are molar mass is what we mean is this. There is a certain number of atoms. It's a very large number. We don't need to know what that number is right now, but that very large number is called the mole for convenience purposes. Because it's a lot easier to say the mole than to say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So these numbers here are not moles. These numbers are grams. But if you have one mole of hydrogen, it has a mass of 1.008 grams. If you have one mole of carbon, it's got a mass of 12.011 grams. You've got one mole of oxygen, 15.999. That's the meaning of the numbers. Now, to help you, to help you understand, I'm gonna use two common substances. One is water, which has the formula H2O, and the other is methane, which has the formula CH4. Now, these are the individual molar masses of elements. If you have a mole of carbon, it's always roughly about 12.011 grams. But what we want to do is we want to figure out the molar mass, not of elements, but of compounds. So water is a compound. It's got two hydrogens and one oxygen. Methane is also a compound, one carbon and four hydrogens. So this is where we do some simple math, a little multiplication, a little addition. In the case of hydrogen, we're going to have two hydrogens, which means we're going to have two times 1.008, which means we have 2.016 grams of hydrogen. That's the contribution of hydrogen to a water molecule. We also have the one oxygen, and I'm just going to carry that across because one times one is all one, and so it's just going to be 15.99. Nine grams of oxygen. So having done the little multiplication, the, the, the products of these calculations, two times the hydrogen, one times the oxygen, we just add them together and we get this number 18.015 grams of per mole of H2O. Now, what is not obvious is that this statement is actually represents a ratio or an act of division. The forward slash implies division. So what this really says, it says 18.015 grams of water divided by one mole of water. If you've got one mole of water, you've got 18.015 grams of water and vice versa. So that's water. We've done water. Now I'm going to do methane. Again, we have one carbon and four hydrogens, so I'll, this time I'll just I'll calculate the, the four hydrogens. So instead of two times 1.008, it's going to be four times 1.008. And if we do that, what do we get? We get 4.032 grams of hydrogen. And again, the carbon, we're just going to carry it along because there's just one. If there is no subscript, it's just one. So if it's H2 and just O, there's no number after it. It's just one oxygen. If it's CH4, the four only applies to the hydrogen. There's no subscript. There's just the one carbon. So the carbon then is 12.011 grams of carbon. So now we have our products and we just add and we get 16.043 grams per mole of methane CH4. Now, I'm going to leave that up on the screen for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to leave it up on the, on the screen for a moment. If you need to copy any and all of that down, I'm going to keep the calculation portion right here. But all this other stuff I'm going to erase. 
in 30 seconds. So of course, the reason I'm giving you this time is just so you can write down anything you need to write. And this reminds me that it's important that I tell you that you really should have a notebook that you keep at home. It's got the important stuff in it. The important stuff is the stuff you need to know. Stuff from lecture that the key points, stuff from the textbook, the key points. And anytime I demonstrate a calculation, an example of how one of those calculations is done. These are key things. You want to do it not because I'm going to take a grade on it. There's no way for me to look at your physical notebook right now, but because we ever get to the point where I'm taking a, a test in a classroom, you would want to be able to refer to to stuff quickly where everything is just a page turn or two away. You don't want to be hunting and pecking through your textbook. You don't want to be hunting and pecking through the blog, looking, trying to watch the videos while you should be taking a, a major test. That's just not going to work. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and erase everything. Except I'm going to leave the molar masses intact. Now what I'm going to do, these are similar to the types of problems we see in the lab and they're very much what happens uh, when we're doing grams to moles, moles to grams. These, since these are actually ratios, these are actually divisions, they can be converted into conversion factors. And I'm going to do one problem with water, I'm going to do one problem with methane. So uh, the first one we're going to do is going to be grams to moles. So I write it like this. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, grams to moles typically implies division. To do the problem, I'm going to simply make up a number which happens to be convenient, OK? I'm going to say that we start off with 30 grams of water, 30 grams of H2O. And like any other given, we write it as a fraction over one. Notice that we write the number, the unit, and the substance, 30 grams of water. Now, I want to get from grams to moles, and since the given is in grams of water, and this, this given is based upon the assumption that we actually tried to measure a certain amount of water. We think we got 30 grams of water by mass. So since we're given grams of water, we're going to want to have grams of water down here so that we can go from grams to moles. We want to get rid of the grams. We go to our conversion factor. The conversion factor says that for every mole of water, we're going to have 18 grams. So I write the 18. 0 0.015 with the grams of water. And then that means the rest is just the mole. And if it's not clear, this is the mass of one mole of water molecules, the molar mass of water. And so we just write one mole H2O. Now with a moment's thought, you should realize the ones could, we could make the ones cancel out. We could, but the key thing is to get rid of the unit and the substance. So we do a little cancellation. And the unit and substance is now gone. Grams of water is now gone. And since the only numbers that are really left is a non one number on the top on the first and a non one number on the bottom, this is just division. Taking a thin rectangular plastic device, which I like to call a calculator, I put in the 30 and we divide it by 18.015. And we're going to get this ridiculously long number, which I'm going to write down. 1.6652789344. I'm using all the digits that aren't zero. Okay, so with a moment's thought, we're going to realize that since all of these are non zero, if we took this number seriously, there'd be a total of 10 significant figures. Now, this 18.015, this, this was calculated, this came from the periodic table, so we can kind of rely upon this and everything here is significant because one in eight is non-zero, one five is non-zero, and the zero in the middle is surrounded by non-zero, so it's confined, so this does have five sig figs. But what about our first number? This was just a number that was just invented based upon the idea that we were somehow trying to measure water. So someone had to get this number by measuring and they said, oh, I think it's 30 grams. But they're, if they're measuring it, you know, how accurate is it? The fact is, this zero that comes after the three is not significant. This is a placeholder zero. The only function of this zero is that it says that the three, which is in front of it, is at the tens place. 
So there's actually only one significant figure here. Now the question becomes, should we express this answer? It should be obvious that this is way, way, way more precise than the actual number of the given. And so the, we cannot possibly take 10 significant figures. You might think, well, we got five from the periodic table. We can trust the periodic table. I mean, it, it looks official. Well, okay, well, we could then just get rid of the, the second five and just keep the first five. But, well, I don't know. The truth is, is that that's still way, way, way more precise than the 30 that we started with, which only has one significant figure. So what I recommend in this circumstance, when you have, I mean, seriously, you got more numbers after the decimal point than you have in front of the decimal point here. There's no way we're going to take that number. I mean, that's a good rule of thumb. If there's way more numbers after the decimal point than what you have in front of the decimal point and you're given, probably not legit, probably unrealistically precise. So we're probably just gonna take this to one. I recommend we go one after the decimal point, which means we would just take those first two, but there is a rule that comes into play here. And that is since this six is followed by a, a digit that is five or higher, in this case it's six, that means we're going to have to raise it because it's gonna actually be closer to 1.7 than it is to 1.6. So we don't count that and we raise this. The most correct answer would be to say 1.7 moles of water. Once again, I'm gonna pause and give you an opportunity just to make sure you copy down what I'm showing you. Because I'm going to erase this bit here at the bottom. Ten seconds. Going on, ladies and gentlemen. So now we're going to do a problem where instead of grams to moles, we're going to go reverse. We're going to go moles to grams. And I need room to do that problem. So. We're, do, we're going to do, do a second problem, which is moles to grams. And instead of using water, we're going to use methane. And I'm going to use the same number. It's just a given. It doesn't really matter what the number is. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say 30, not grams, 30 moles of methane. So I have a number, a unit, and a substance. And I write it over one in parentheses, just like we would any other number. And this is going to be moles to grams. Since we have moles of methane here in the top, it follows that when we are trying to go from moles to grams, we're going to want to get rid of the moles. And so we're going to write moles of methane here. And this is this is our conversion factor, the molar mass of methane. It says 16.043 grams per one mole, per one mole. So we write one mole here. And that means the grams has to go on top, grams of CH4, and the number is 16. 0.043. Oh, happy day. At this point, we should realize, oh, we can now get rid of the unit and the substance in the given, the moles of methane. So we cancel both of those out. And since everything on the bottom is just one and no one cares about one because anything divided by one is still the same thing, that means this, if anything, this is even easier. And this is why moles to grams problems are always multiplication. So we just multiply. So we're going to take our number, which is 30. And we're going to not divide, we're going to multiply it by 16.043, which is the molar mass of methane. And we're going to get this number. And again, I'll write it here at the bottom for a moment. It says 481.29. Okay. Well, again, if we evaluate it, uh, there are five significant figures here, obviously all non-zero. And there's five here, but again, only one here placeholder again. So we're not actually going to count 481.29. We can't count all of that stuff. What we're going to do is we're just 
we're going to say to ourselves, OK, maybe just one significant figure. After the decimal, so we would only go this far. But since that number is followed by uh, a number, a digit that's greater than five, in this case it's nine. I mean, this is way closer to 481.3 than it is to 481.2. So clearly we would not count the nine, that would go. And the most correct answer would be 481.3 grams of methane. 